So good morning, Europe. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Middle East. Good afternoon, India and uh, Asia. Welcome to the second uh, DigX uh, global webinar and the digital get together. We are more than happy having you all live around the globe. We have more than uh, 200 participants, uh, uh, approximately around 300 registrations. How many participants we will get, we will see, but uh, we saw a lot of guys uh, joining this. Uh, digital global webinar uh, uh, welcome again um, let me introduce myself um, and uh, i'm ivanov uh, ceo of dkx international and ceo of dkx um, group responsible for the global market development and uh, i want to introduce also the colleagues uh, with me on uh, this dkx uh, global webinar um, uh, we have uh, thomas thomas king cto of uh, dkx and uh, chris chris Dietzel. Uh, a global head of product and uh, research at DKX. Uh, um, they will present with me today. I'm extremely um, happy we have exciting content with you. And uh, we'll just touch on this uh, in a sec. But allow me first uh, to uh, uh, introduce to you some housekeeping um, details uh, for this video conference. Um, as you can see on the slide, uh, um, we have uh, with the Go webinar an excellent tool to have a very um, dynamic uh, presentation, but also uh, even more dynamic and uh, virtual and interactive um, uh, questions and answers part. This is very important because first we will present and share with you our updates and afterwards uh, we wish to have very interactive uh, questions and answer sessions. Um, in the first webinar we did, uh, we got tons of questions. Some of them we even couldn't answer within the uh, scheduled time. So please feel very active and um, let's pass on this uh, record and have now even more questions out of uh, Middle East, India and Asia uh, looking forward. So the questions and answers part will begin after the presentation part and uh, you can voice your question, but also you can text your question. You can text your question during even the presentation part. So Vulcan Tremel, who uh, you, you might know from the DKX Academy, uh, is in backstage and he will um, 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 moderate the, the questions part, but also note your questions, uh, written questions. So feel free to, to text them and they will be um, noted and um, answered, of course. The session, last but not least, um, is recorded, recorded on video. Just uh, uh, pay attention on this fact. Uh, yeah, everybody will receive uh, a link afterwards by email uh, where you guys can can uh, have a chance to uh, follow up on the recording and, and um, uh, um, um, re recall the, the entire session again and, and, and uh, uh, listen and watch on uh, some, some uh, details. And now um, uh, let me uh, let me start um, with uh, our update to all of you valid customers, valid partners, uh, valid friends of DigX uh, around the globe, and especially in this part of the world, Middle East, uh, India, uh, Asia, a part of the world uh, which is uh, obviously, as uh, almost everywhere, uh, extremely affected by the current situation we have with the COVID-19 crisis. We all got locked. Businesses got locked, people got locked physically, and especially in this very challenging time, we all see how important digital infrastructure became. We all knew, we as experts in this business, you as network operators, you as people involved in digital infrastructure build, how important digital infrastructure is. But now, dear friends, the entire world knows this. The entire world knows how important digital infrastructure is for our private and our daily business life. Um, and the answers we have delivered as community, as industry, the digital answers we have delivered, they uh, were welcomed around the globe as the only one reasonable answer to how people can work out of home using a lot of collaborative apps, how people can manage their kids at home, educating them further, how uh, healthcare in a digital way can still be contributed uh, where it comes to doctors' uh, interviews and uh, how uh, basic logistics um, uh, around the household or around the company for organize, organize, organizing different teams and collaboration with business partners can happen. All these digital answers have been delivered. This, everything 
had a very special impact on how we uh, behave today, how we do business. And we realize that our industry delivers a great job. Today, we want to celebrate with you this and give an update, at least from our end, how DITIX contributes to this situation, what we have in mind if it comes to the future in terms of services. But first of all, we want to share with you our um, admiration for what this community has achieved and how we can help together people globally to uh, make their business and private life easier. We, we see that digital infrastructure in these days is even more needed everywhere for everybody and for everything. And this is our general message. Let's together develop digital infrastructure, whatever is possible, ideally everywhere, because this is the backbone of the economy for the future. And this is one of the greatest help people can experience in crisis like today. On the next slide, guys, you see that this um, is our path as DKICS. Um, we have decided to build digital infrastructure in terms of interconnection, solutions, platforms, whatever we can. Therefore, over the past 25 years, we um, developed different markets across the globe. As of today, we do operate in uh, uh, different markets on four continents. DKIX offers services in 22 different markets, including uh, North America, Europe, Middle East, uh, India, and um, Asia. You can see there are more than 2,000 networks connected to our different exchanges with a, a approximate connected capacity of more than 60 tara. And this together with the interlinks and interconnection of the different platforms, these are the red lines between the dots. We have today, and we are very proud of this together with you, we have created the largest interconnection neutral ecosystem on the planet and uh, this interconnection ecosystem delivers great services to uh, a lot of regions which are highly affected uh, by the crisis as of today and the lessons learned we have seen over the past couple of weeks you can see on the next slide um, we have realized that this ecosystem um, um, records uh, uh, um, um, a traffic increase of uh, more than 50% uh, on average on all markets. We got a lot of traffic peaks in, in several DigX platforms and several DigX exchanges you can see on the slide, which shows that digital infrastructure at our end um, and at your end as network operator um, has been uh, used and is in usage uh, um, heavily. Uh, we have seen that the behavior of people in times of crisis uh, changed a lot, that everything now is done out of home. The homes became our offices for um, the, for daily business and, and also for planning everything around our private life as well, but also for education for our kids, for the millions of students and, and, and school kids around the globe who do not have the chance to visit university or school today. So uh, we see um, digital infrastructure was, uh, has been heavily in use and Chris and Thomas will give you more um, uh, details uh, about this um, later on in depth. Uh, I wanna just touch on, on two um, uh, details, uh, especially if it comes to our services, how the Dix cloud service uh, became extremely important uh, for uh, serving uh, um, digital education offerings. Uh, Chris will share with you more details uh, from um, uh, one of the, um, the DigX regions today, providing the example how digital infrastructure can support this. And the second um, one is uh, related uh, to the upgrades and the robustness of DigX platform. Um, at no point we realized that our services and the infrastructure at our end was challenged. Um, this uh, is uh, um, thanks to the well preparation and, and the constant upgrades infrastructure wise at our end. So our backbone and our platform are extremely solid. So all these multiples in connected capacity, upgrades, etc., more than doubling in streams of uh, collaborative work applications like Zoom, Skype, um, Webex and, and others, uh, are more than doubling on streaming of, of video or even gaming, um, uh, challenge the DigX uh, platforms uh, worldwide. 
So uh, we are ready to serve this tons of traffic and we believe, and um, this is um, uh, my general statement uh, for the entire community today, but even beyond uh, that, uh, a very special heritage for all providers of digital infrastructure should be expressed today. Uh, we all see that uh, these massive upgrades around the globe justify the importance of digital infrastructure. Enterprises, they started uh, using digital infrastructure, businesses around the globe, and I believe this will be the foundation for the times after Corona, where we'll experience a paradigm change in the usage of digital answers, more than we have had it in the past, because the change in behavior people and businesses show within this crisis um, will last, will last because people see how reliable digital infrastructure can be, how effective digital solutions are. And DigX will follow on this path and um, offer the services needed. You will um, um, hear uh, later on from Chris about the services and, and, and solutions we do plan involving all potential participants of the future in the platforms like enterprises, like industry sectors, uh, healthcare, finance, automotive, logistics, all of these to participate in our interconnection uh, solutions and to collaborate also with you as um, network operators delivering backbone solutions uh, as well. So we believe that more automation, uh, more self-service, more flexibility and more geographical presence are needed. And this is what DECX is committed to doing it today and will continue doing this in the future, especially uh, into the times after the corona, where we'll see um, a new boost, uh, further new boost in uh, usage of digital infrastructure. If we talk about infrastructure, it's always about business continuity. Uh, it's always about solid setups and uh, solid and excellent engineering. And this is the topic of the next part. And want to hand over to Thomas, who will uh, present to you uh, the Dickens business continuity plan and an outlook for 2020 in terms of infrastructure. Thomas, the floor is yours. So welcome also from my side. Um, as already introduced, I'm Thomas King. I'm CTO at uh, DKIX and responsible for our uh, production network worldwide. Um, and I uh, want to directly jump on the next slide and show you, uh, you know, how well uh, we have been prepared for this um, Corona crisis. Um, you know, it's um, um, to to uh, to make it very easy uh, to handle the the impact of the Corona crisis. Um, we could build on the ESO certification, which we already had in place, the ESO 27001 uh, certification, um, which allowed us uh, to build on the, the business plan, uh, sorry, the business continuity plan, uh, which we already had, um, because the certification we already did uh, about 10 years ago, the first time, and um, this, um, you know, contains a very um, extensive part, which is the business continuity plan, and we just needed to update this and adapt it to the situation as, as we were going. Um, and uh, as we already have a very um, scalable infrastructure in place uh, worldwide, um, also the traffic increase we have seen the last couple of weeks made it very easy for us to handle that. And just to give you a few numbers, um, on a global scale, uh, our infrastructure, even with the traffic increase of about 50%, uh, which uh, Ivo just described, we saw, um, we saw that our infrastructure is now only using 63% of the capacity available. And, um, and um, you know, um, one thing is that we, can, uh, that we have uh, a lot of capacity available, but the other um, great thing about this infrastructure is that we can easily add additional capacity. And the same is, um, um, the same is true if you look at UAEX. Uh, because over there uh, we are already in a little bit better situation um, because there we only use 50 percent of the capacity right now even after the um, increase of the capacity which was uh, needed after the um, after the corona crisis traffic increase and so we have still 50 percent uh, free capacity available for further traffic um, yeah, um, increases. On the next slide um, I you know I want to show you that infrastructure is important but uh, even more important uh, is the team and the staff who is running it, because only if you have uh, professional people around and um, if they make sure they, they
they take care of the infrastructure you can deliver either, uh, even in crites like this. So for instance, uh, we decided to, um, to introduce second shift for our customer service team. Um, the customer service team is taking care of um, um, provisionings of uh, new interconnection services, um, but also um, they, they are responsible um, to help you out if there is an emergency or on your side, is there an incident with the infrastructure, something like this. So we introduced a second shift for, um, for provisioning of services, which uh, starts at 8 now, uh, 8 a.m. in the morning and uh, until 10 p.m. at night European time. Um, and, uh, you know, with a two hours time shift for Dubai, that's a perfect coverage of the typical office hours in Dubai as well. Um, and the great thing is for uh, for India, we already have a local team uh, which uh, is available at uh, you know at the local time. And also, if you need to make an appointment with them for provisioning at night or something, they they are also available. So we have a perfectly covered um, um, we have perfectly covered the time zones for service provisioning. Um, and uh, as I already touched uh, the, um, in in times of emergency, so if there's a hiccup, if if something breaks. Um, we are available 24 seven. You can just call us uh, and we pick up the phone and help you out. Um, and, um, you know, um, um, the, the impact of this Corona crisis was very limited on our infrastructure as well, because um, we, we have already largely automated our uh, infrastructure. So um, when we decided that we need to move into, um, um, into working from home, it was very easy for our people to just take the laptops and the tools they already have in place and work from home. We didn't need to, uh, to change a lot of our infrastructure to make that happen. And um, we also have um, introduced robots uh, recently. Actually, uh, two years ago, we introduced the first one and last year we added two new ones um, that allow to, um, uh, you know, to create uh, cross connects uh, without having any, um, any human on site on a data center to um, to uh, physically connect to cables and this is um, you know what allows us to even provide cross connects um, in the middle of the night over the weekend or if a data center is locked down we can still uh, do physical work like uh, um, connecting cables um, and um, what we have also done during the corona crisis we have uh, increased our customer service in NOC team, uh, team in India. So we have now um, two teams, one in Mumbai and one in Delhi, to cover the, um, the big locations which we are running now in India. Um, so that um, also helps our customers. Um, if, they, um, if they have a request, we can uh, directly answer that from the local team in India. Um, on the next slide, I want to um, uh, show you that we, um, of course, are in constant um, uh, in permanent contact with our partners. Um, is it a data center partner, carrier, or uh, our hardware vendors? Um, it is important for us to, to have a um, permanent uh, conversation with them, making sure that we are understanding how they are working, what their uh, capabilities are at the moment, uh, what it means to our um, requests or inquiries we send to them, so that we have a clear understanding of what the delivery times is for services we need to have. Uh, so far, um, there was no delay um, for any service which we needed to provide connectivity to our customers. So I think we are in a very good um, situation at the moment. Um, um, what also helped DKIX is that DKIX or the uh, interconnection infrastructure we are running is considered to be critical infrastructure in every single country where we have operations. Um, so we are in contact with the different local authorities, uh, making sure that we get uh, special empowerments if needed. Um, to um, to access our infrastructure and uh, execute work there. Um, for instance, uh, you know, um, um, India, they have a very strict lockdown um, regime um, and you're not allowed to, um, you, you know, to travel um, far away from your apartment. However, um, um, as we are an operator of critical infrastructure, we got a specially licensed driver which could us drive, which could drive our engineers to the data center to execute work. Um, and I will quick, uh, quickly touch um, touch a case study, which we just executed on the next slide, um, to show you what we have just done during the corona situation. So for the DKIX uh, India, and especially for the Mumbai, uh, for DKIX Mumbai um, uh, internet infrastructure, uh, we have done a DWDM extension. Um, and you can see here the four different uh, data centers and uh, the, the red lines in between are the DWDM 
um, fibers or a network which we are running now. And uh, you see that we have upgraded the capacity uh, four times. So uh, in the beginning we had uh, CV, uh, CWDM um, with 40 gigs of capacity, and now we have 160 gigs of capacity available at all, uh, at all spans. And this is, um, uh, you know, so something which we need in uh, in Mumbai because we see a lot of additional traffic, a lot of crows, not only because of the corona situation, uh, also before that. So there was a, a lot of demand for capacity over there, and uh, yeah, we were quite happy to to finalize this project even during the corona crisis. And it was a great team of uh, effort and um, the different uh, team players uh, were created together to make that happen. So that was nice to see that even in this kind of situation, we are uh, able to move quickly and uh, provide additional capacity if needed. Um, I have also um, uh, brought um, another business uh, continu continuity um, case study um, here. And uh, this one covers uh, our, um, our location in, in Dubai, the UAEX. Here there a situation was that the government uh, asked um, that uh, you know, uh, pupils um, should be um, um, sh should get uh, homeschooling, so um, they need to stay at home and will be teached uh, from their parents. But for, to make that happen, they need to have digital services uh, to, port, uh, to support that. So on the 11th of uh, March, uh, we get a request to uh, upgrade the capacity from Microsoft at uh, UAEX to 200 gigs. Um, and um, there was a very uh, hard time pressure on that because the government wanted to move uh, to homeschooling quite quickly uh, and uh, making sure that uh, the quality of the service, uh, services is high. So we had one day uh, for making sure the contractual agreement um, was finalized. And actually, um, we, we managed to do that even that uh, it was a Thursday and, you know, in Dubai, uh, on Thursdays, uh, the weekend starts, so you know you have a very limited time frame to get things done. But we managed to, to do so, um, and then uh, we had six working days to get the, uh, the infrastructure upgrade to 200 gigs. Um, and uh, happily, we uh, we made it together with our partners, and it was a team uh, team effort. And so the homeschooling uh, could start without any um, any delays or any uh, you know um, impact on quality. So that was a great. Great work uh, executed by the team um, and just shows um, also another example how quickly digits can move even if there is a lot of you know uncertainty um, around um, and uh, yeah given uh, given the corona crisis. Um, let me uh, you know um, go a little bit more abstract and show you what we have done um, at all of our locations, not only at um, uh, at uh, Mumbai or Dubai as I just mentioned. But also at, uh, for instance, Frankfurt. In Frankfurt, we have uh, just uh, installed two additional routers in our data centers, which are capable of providing 576 times 100 GE ports. That's a lot of uh, capacity which we have just added, and uh, this allows us to grow further if uh, additional requirements for capacity are coming in. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're in a good shape here. And we, um, we, what we also did, we um, uh, enabled three additional sites um, with DKIX pops so that customers in these data centers can directly connect to DKIX uh, by just ordering a cross connector. So it makes it very easy for our customers to connect to DKIX. And I want also to highlight Marseille. Um, we, we did a similar thing in Marseille. We added one uh, additional data center to the DKIX Marseille um, setup. And uh, we also increased uh, the capacity uh, in, in, in our network in Marseille by um, seven times. Um, we actually just replaced the whole network infrastructure because we uh, made sure we are ready for 100 and 400 gig uh, uh, customer ports and increase the capacity uh, over there heavily. Um, on the next slide, let me quickly um, also show you um, what we are, um, what we have done so far already in India. I already touched um, the Mumbai um, uh, capacity upgrade. I probably don't need to talk about that. Um, um, and I just want to tell you what we have also done in Delhi, Kolkata, and Chennai. As you know, uh, these sites are now operational, and we have um, one data center added um, to this um, um, uh, internet exchanges now so that customers can easily connect to us by just ordering one cross connect. Um, and uh, uh, let me now switch to Singapore, Malaysia, because uh, we are currently, as we speak, 
in the process of installing um, infrastructure over there as well. So in Kuala Lumpur, we will have a pop, um, we will have one in Chuabao and of course in Singapore. Um, and over there we have different data centers as you see here on the list. So it's uh, from, from day one when it's um, uh, RFS, it will be a very uh, strong network already. Um, and um, on the next slide, I want to show you, and uh, Ivo already touched that topic a bit, uh, that we uh, interconnected all the different uh, locations which we, are, uh, which we run. Um, so for instance, we, we just added Dallas in New York, um, um, or we, we're currently in the process of doing it uh, as we talk. Um, and I hope this will be done by um, end of this month, beginning of next month. So then uh, Dallas will also be part of the, uh, the global um, DKIX network. Um, and uh, what we have also done is we have um, uh, added Dubai to Marseille. And uh, of course, there's a link uh, between Marseille and Frankfurt. So all the, the, um, the interconnection services, for instance, the cloud services, uh, which are available in Frankfurt, can now also be consumed out of Dubai if uh, there is demand. And we see a lot of demand for this kind of uh, services. So um, yeah, that's um, a good addition that we have this link available as well. Um, we are also uh, in process of getting Delhi and Mumbai uh, connected um, between each other so that uh, you know customers of Delhi can uh, connect and peer with uh, customers in Mumbai. Um, and also in Kuala Lumpur, Chua Bao and Singapore, um, these three internet exchanges will be connected with each other from day one. Um, so um, yeah, I guess that's a pretty, uh, pretty big step in, um, in interconnecting these IXPs for this area and will provide a lot of uh, value for our customers over there. Um, so um, let me you now um, let me now look a little bit more into the future in what will come in 2020. Um, and um, I will touch two topics here. So one is, um, you know, DKIX has been very strongly supporting um, the uh, API first approach, meaning that uh, for all the, the services we are providing, we want to have and want to provide our customers an API, and we have pushed very hard in the in the last uh, two years in in doing so. And um, you know, um, when we looked into the um, the landscape of different APIs available for interconnection services, we realized that there are a few out there, but there is no dominant and, and standard API available for that. And this makes it very um, expensive and uh, and cumbersome for our customers to use APIs for interconnection services. Um, so we decided we need to uh, join forces with uh, other players and um, make sure that we have one standard for um, an API in, in the interconnection domain. And this is what uh, what uh, resulted in a project which we call IX API, which we did together with Amdix and Lynx um, as, as uh, partners. And we already had launched partners like Interaction, the data center provider, which is now part of DRT, uh, and Epsilon, uh, which is also very strong in the Asian market. Um, for providing um, interconnection services. Um, and uh, this uh, API is already available since last year, and uh, now we are, are working on version two, and uh, version two will be available in this uh, quarter, and it will also provide uh, connectivity um, for, the, uh, uh, will also provide features for the direct cloud connectivity. So um, when, when, you, um, when you have a demand for direct connection to a cloud service provider, you can use the API to provision that service, configure it, and also cancel that service if you don't need it anymore. Um, uh, later on, we will also add uh, virtual PNI, which is our um, uh, ePipe product. Um, and this will probably come in, uh, in Q3 this year. Um, and um, and you know as as the API is the tool to pro uh, to allow computers to talk to each other and place orders and configure services, we we also want to make sure that um, if a human um, and we are still humans, right? So a lot of our customers uh, like to configure the uh, the services themselves and and orders uh, the services themselves. So uh, we are pushing very hard to uh, upgrade the DKIX portal with additional self-service features. So that, um, and you see just a screenshot here, which shows you uh, we will have um, a new workflow for ordering um, different uh, interconnection services. And uh, um, and you know, if you click on um, on on these buttons, you will directly configure um, an interconnection service, and it will be provisioned right away. So the service, after you have clicked the final button, um, it will be available in a few seconds and uh, uh, ready to consume and ready to use. 
Um, so that's a, um, a big step in, in uh, what we are working on. I'm pretty sure we will see the, uh, the tickets portal um, with enhanced self-service uh, features in Q2 as well. And then over the, um, over the course of this year, we will upgrade additional uh, features as we go. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much from my side. Um, the, later on, there will be a, a Q&A session. So whenever you have a question, please uh, let me know. I'm more than happy to answer questions. And now I want to hand over to Chris uh, because he will give us insights into the, um, you know, what, what changed during the corona crisis in the global interconnection systems. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Welcome uh, to my living room, to everyone around the, there in the world. I really hope that you and your company doing well, even in those uh, special times. So as uh, previously introduced uh, by Thomas and Ivo, I'm responsible for the products and the research at DKIX. So I'm usually a bit number driven. So that's why I try to um, present you the signs of change we are observing in the global interconnection system. So next, I just um, give you an overview of which changes we are actually seeing at the different hubs of DKICs all across the globe. We start and see stuff in Europe, we see it in the Middle East, we see it in India, but we also see it in the US. So same patterns everywhere. And the general hits and shifts are actually before in the normal DKICS time and without this special crisis, we saw a 10 to 50% peak increase per year. However, now we're observing the same thing just within a few days. And um, as Thomas pointed out, our infrastructure was really built to cope with it. And I believe also you as ISPs or CDN or network pr providers in general were really able to deliver, which is a strong sign in the future or for the future. So before we tend to see a steady growth over the year and new peaks and DKIX ecosystems usually happening in, in fall and winter, which is uh, naturally since people rather stay at home and uh, watch video than being out in the cold. So at least in Central Europe where we have uh, colder winters and hotter summers. Um, however, sometimes there are live events and then we got new traffic peaks. However, these days there was no particularly event but the crisis and people moving from their offices to their homes, from their schools to their homes, or not really being in the public anymore to protect themselves and their families. So we see new peaks that really correlate very well with the lockdown. So just from looking at the data graphs of our exchanges and the different, different traffic um, patterns, I show you later some more details on this, we can really tell just from the data when, whether a country um, introduced the lockdown or not. So what we also seen before is a fairly stable distribution of traffic and applications, meaning that there was a certain percentage of video traffic, CDN traffic or web traffic across all our platforms. And those patterns usually didn't really change fast. Over the course of years, of course, we saw that video traffic is growing and some other traffic like peer-to-peer -peer traffic was declining. However, now we see some applications. So we call it collaborative tools, which is Skype, um, WebEx, Teams, Zoom, all the video tools and all the communication means we need to stay in touch and work from home. And we saw really extreme rises in those, also gaming and obviously video. So I believe we can roughly cluster in people staying at home for and work using video communications and those tools and people are at home and being entertained. So what we also see, usually we have a very strict uh, diurnal cycle. So the traffic increases slow in the morning, then we have a small bump in the lunch break and a fast increase in the afternoon, peaks at night, and then the traffic declines again. We roughly have the same pattern though, but at the moment we see that in the morning there's a, a higher rise. So a lot more people consuming the internet, either for education, for work, and then we see a not so high, not so high uh, increase in the afternoon, but a steady increase at night. And actually, the most significant increase we see after uh, around midnight and, and the hours after midnight, which might be a signal that people um, don't really have to go to work or they save the commuting uh, commuting communi uh, commu commuting time um, to their workplace and they do other stuff and staying uh, longer. Uh, awake at night. 
So on the next slide, um, I'd like to dive a bit into what we observed in Frankfurt. Frankfurt with a peak traffic of 9.2, 9 almost 9.2 terabits peak traffic, um, gives us really a good perspective in what's going on. So if we focus on the first plot on the left-hand side, which is the total traffic in Frankfurt, um, over the course of a few weeks. And we can really see um, the increase of 10%, which correlates with the lockdown in Frankfurt. So nowadays, obviously, the internet and the total traffic graph of an internet exchange is a mirror of the society, right? If we see a big increase there, something is changing. On this, in the center, we have another plot. Um, here again, the average yellow, the peaks uh, in, in, in red and we see a 100% increase in collaborative working. So that's what uh, Ivo said in the beginning. That's uh, what I refer to as WebEx Zoom Teams things. And um, we also see significant more work during work days compared to weekends. So you see the bumps there, which is at the weekends where people don't use those tools um, too often because they also want to be entertained. And then if we next focus on the entertainment part once more, particularly in this case, a gaming provider for uh, a younger audience, rather young kids. And we see before the crisis and before the lockdown event, we see the patterns, the diurnal circle, uh, cycles again, which or in this case, weekly cycles. And we see that at the weekend, the traffic is much higher because kids have more time at the weekend than during the week. And then we see the lock and lockdown happened and it appears to be always weekend. So even though people are school, uh, kids are schooled at home, they appear to have more time to play games and uh, also enjoy themselves, probably because they uh, cannot escape their flats as well. So on the next slide, we'd like to dive a bit into what we are experiencing in Dubai in the Middle East. So we see staggering traffic and traffic peak traffic increase plus 40% in, uh, in the Middle East, in Dubai, specifically with the UAE IX. And there is a lot more consumption of online content. So all the CDNs pushing a lot more traffic, a lot more gaming traffic, plus 100%. And uh, a lot of video streaming, because we heard it before the story from Thomas. Um, universities moved online, all the schooling done online, and this is why we also have an increase of 50% video streaming for entertainment and collaborative tools for schooling, working. So the same pattern holds for Dubai, as we can see. On the next slide, we have the same numbers for India. The percentages vary a bit here, but we can also report that those um, relevant usage patterns hold, hold also for Dubai, specifically Mumbai. Peak traffic increased by 20%. We saw growth over all categories and the same reasons as before. 80% increase in gaming, 120% uh, in video streaming. And I believe for the Indian markets, it's uh, particularly remarkable since actually it's a growth market where um, we would still expect a steady growth. However, we really have those high peaks, which is really, really interesting. So next, I'd like to um, compare or outline a bit the implications for the internet infrastructure. Because what we've proved with those staggering numbers is that actually the internet backbone, that is DKIX with its interconnection platforms across the globe. But second of all, and even more important, it's you guys operating all those network, uh, networks, residential networks, mobile networks, CDNs, some ISP service, hosting service, all this stuff. And the internet backbone was able and is designed to absorb such fast growing traffic. And in the mid to long term, if we think about those implications, um, we don't expect really to, to go the traffic really down or that um, there is now too much provision capacity. No, because what we just saw is a development which would have happened anyway within the next years, just happened now in a shorter period of time. And specifically the traffic patterns with the extreme peaks. Um, I believe that's really a glimpse into the future because the changes we're observing now that a lot more people working from home are way more flexible with, with their working hours is something to come within the ne next decade anyway. And we need to prepare um, our infrastructure for it and the entire interconnection infrastructure. 
and there won't be such strict different differences between business and residential networks or there's the office space and I consume the cloud service from my company's office space. No, I'd move around in the city and rely on services from, from the company. I sit at home and work. And also um, the cloud per se is not just access to one cloud because I just pushed workloads from my local servers in my data center to the cloud. No, I'll have more cloud native applications. I'll have multi-cloud approaches. So a lot of what we see now um, will hold for the future. So, and just to emphasize on the next slide, um, how we at DKIX strategically um, thinking about uh, the changes of the ecosystem is previously in many, many cases, business workloads were consumed from the enterprise through their ISPs somewhere in the internet. Some didn't really matter which path they used, how long the path were, what the latency was. There was no real quality guarantee other than the packet was delivered and there was no real unified access to the cloud services. So that worked well for what we had. But now we're consuming Microsoft 365 services. We're consuming AWS services. And we're not only consuming them from the headquarter network, from the branch office network, or maybe from one, one or two um, very close by networks. No, as we can see here, the shift of the distribution of the traffic is across all those different locations. And it's not just one cloud, it's multi clouds. And here we really build with the DKIX Cloud Exchange an infrastructure that supports those develops and will continue to develop those um, um, changes of the internet ecosystem in the future. So on the next slide, I um, actually have summarized uh, for you once more the DKIX access service world because I believe it's a very important product concept of DKIX which enables full flexibility and resilience now and for the future. So we have one access, this is the foundation. Access is physically you plug the cable into our gear. It's a 1 GE, 10 GE, 100 GE. You plug it in and then you can decide on demand whether you need peering, cloud, you need some point-to-point -point virtual PNI services or a lot of services to come in the future. And you have the flexibility and in, in the current situation we, we had a scenario where an operator was just using 50 percent. So he bought 100 uh, gigabits access and 50 gigabits peering. And just in the situation the demand increased and actually more peering was needed and more cloud connectivity was needed but it took them one phone call. Just reach out to, to Marco say I, I need more and we can just, just provision it. And I think with this um, very flexible product um, structure, which we have access and build services on demand and can scale those up, we can multiple services on one exit. We can even overbook a bit. We can serve um, provision services on demand, allows you to monetize the port better and allows us to provide you the flexibility. So on the next slide, I actually have the um, final remark from my side and I'd like to focus a bit more on, on the cloud world. So on the left hand side, we see actually the entire internet ecosystem, which is the enterprise customers, content providers, data centers, but also more than 45 um, cloud providers in the ecosystem. So we have Alibaba Cloud available as direct cloud service as a service on this platform and you can have peering and on, on top of it you can also rely on direct cloud interconnects which is for all the partners the preferred way of interconnection because it's prioritized over general and, and uh, general internet traffic. And we have the AWS, Google Cloud, IBM, Azure, Zap, Alibaba as I said before and the breaking news is and I um, know it's already announced, but I, I, I still think it shows us where the ecosystems in the Middle East and uh, India and in Singapore, uh, Malaysia already anyway, uh, in which direction it goes. So Google Cloud Live in India, we are about to connect uh, Microsoft with Azure and Microsoft 365. Just a few days from now, single cross connect missing. You are AIX, we have AWS Live, we have Microsoft Azure Live there. And I believe that's um, the biggest opportunity now to really consume the cloud services and improve this cloud strategy for a lot of enterprises. So 
that's basically it from my side. I'd like to hand over once more to, to Ivo. Um, I'm more than happy to take questions later on, or um, if you have any questions, even after the webinar, we're always happy to reach out to us. Thank you so much for now. Thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, Thomas, for uh, these great insights. What we have learned, guys, you see what Dickix uh, uh, has delivered, uh, not just because of the crisis, but especially in the COVID times, you see the boost of, uh, of, of cloud development. Uh, you, you learned that uh, we, we use robots because robots, uh, fortunately, cannot get corona and cannot get arrested going to, to a data center. Um, we uh, extended dramatically the, the reach of our infrastructure, even during uh, uh, locked times. Why we do this? We do this because we believe that uh, this is the answer to private and business lives today uh, and will uh, last like this. But what we want to focus on even more now um, is uh, to learn out of this crisis for the entire industry and the entire community. What we see we dear friends customers valid partners and supporters we see that the awareness for the beauty and the answers of digital infrastructure became extremely high um, just a couple of weeks back when the the, the lockdown started i have chats with uh, the ceos of uh, uh, bigger organizations from the enterprise sector who told me oh we asked our teams to use analog phones Oh, we just stay safe and the communication can keep on running. I said, um, oh, wow, why is that? Yeah, we do not think that the, 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 the digital solutions and tools we have will, uh, will, will be that robust. What I want to tell these guys today, you can trash these phones. You can trash these phones because digital infrastructure proved its resilience. We proved that we can help a country where the entire education went digital to perform this. We proved that all the entire streaming of collaborative publications can uh, take the additional load and people can stay connected digitally together where they are physically locked. And we should together as industry use this um, lessons learned from this crisis and write together the new chapter. And I invite you to, uh, to write this new chapter together with us the new chapter after the times of Corona, which is the new deal of interconnection, we as DigXC. This new deal for interconnection consists of two pillars. The one pillar is to be everywhere for everybody and everything. This requires global and interconnected provision and delivery of services. As we showed you in different cases, this happens already and the map you saw uh, justifies this, the DigX map. Uh, the interconnection should happen also closer to the edge where the needs will be in the future, given the 5G development, given the IoT uh, communication, etc. We need more cloud and content applications to be served closer to the users, therefore the geographical expansion. And we need um, a lot of interconnection solutions of new type, interconnection solutions for new participants, for all the businesses around the globe who need this. Internet can save lives, and we saw this. In the healthcare, healthcare sector, digital solutions led to the result that doctors, they could talk to their clients, and telediagnostic could happen where people were not allowed or to go out, or they were not in the physical position to go out. So we see how important this is, and this will uh, develop extremely fast in the next months and years the development of enterprise great uh, solutions DICIC supports highly with closed user group and federations solutions for finance healthcare logistics automotive and beyond this actually for all sectors so all this together and this is the second uh, pillar the new deal for interconnection is based on should happen extremely seamless and easy should be automated Self-provisioning is a key answer. By-click flexibility is a key answer. And Thomas showed you the portal uh, plans we do have and also the, the different uh, infrastructure solutions like gateways, the APIs, etc. It should be super flexible. So Self-service, which is super flexible, means robustness and resilience because the upgrade and the turn on of new service 
just can happen 24 7 and within a couple of seconds this is where we want to be and now where you are and what are your demands are what your uh, um, uh, questions are this is now the next uh, uh, part of our webinar the questions and answers part uh, uh, i'm really 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 looking um, after because uh, this is a very interactive uh, part and Thomas, Chris and myself are more than happy to listen to you, to your needs, to your questions, to your remarks. Look, in the right hand of the slide, you can see the, the, um, the, the tools you can use. To just raise your hand and Wolfgang, you switch into live so you can voice your question or just type it in and uh, uh, Wolfgang will moderate this. Hello, Wolfgang, you know him from the Digix Academy, now live at, at stage with us. So this is the opening of the questions and answers part. So the voice is yours, guys. Hello, everybody. I'm Wolfgang Tremmel from the DKIX Academy, and I'm going to moderate the question and answer session. The first question comes from Ali Rizvi. Ali, you have the microphone. OK, I think my mic is on. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Great. Um, and thank you for a so wonderful presentation. I have been following D6 for quite some time. To make it short, I have already seen how you have uh, taken the current crisis situation to expand your capacity. It's a wonderful business opportunity as well for you. My question is to Mr. Ivanov, who is continuously mentioning that they are trying to help countries uh, getting more and more and providing more and more digital homeschooling opportunities. So most of your presentation was focusing on Dubai and Mumbai. My question is, are you using this current crisis as opportunity to expand to other countries. Most specifically, I am uh, talking about Pakistan, where government is pushing very hard to deal with this crisis situation and provide children homeschooling opportunity, where your presence is very important. I think you people are now very visible globally. Uh, oh, thank you so much uh, for uh, this great question. Uh, um, the answer is you're absolutely right first uh, that uh, uh, digital education is extremely close related to the services we want to offer. As Chris mentioned, uh, the direct and secure cloud connectivity can support all these uh, um, educational uh, applications we do see as a digital classroom, etc. Uh, and the Dubai example just has been used by us as a use case to, to prove this. But of course, we, we, we want to, to introduce this as a solution, and we have been introducing this as a solution on all these markets. So the, 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 the connectivity of Microsoft, of Google and others who offer digital class solutions is excellent on all DKIX markets. And you have seen how fast this can be upgraded. Uh, about new markets, we do not use the crisis. We started to, to expand to new market, markets. We just see that the DKIX strategy of expanding geographically, we started years and years back. You, you know, we, we started operations in Dubai together with our partner doing data mainer, um, almost eight years back. So um, this is a constant taking strategy. We continue this, we'll continue this even more uh, actively in the future, adding more markets. The crisis, they just justify the correctness of this strategy, that this strategy is the right thing to be done because local internet interconnection solutions in a sense of a platforms like DKIX um, uh, will be the answer for more robustness, more resilience and more services in the future. And regarding Pakistan, you know, uh, I showed you the map. There are a lot of empty um, uh, spots on this map where a DKIX dot can be placed in. And we're working and looking forward to add as, as many as possible dots in the next years. Let me answer your question in that way. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're very welcome. Next question, next question comes from Sheka Gupta. Uh, Sheka, you have the microphone. Sheka, you have to unmute yourself if you want to talk. Hi, everyone. Hello. Um, we, we can hear you. Hello. Uh, hi, everyone. My question is, uh, in India, some content provider and uh, some telco, some IX are uh, creating monopoly. Uh, and this situation, uh, you have any uh, uh, strategy for uh, fight this situation? Um, Especially the strategy. 
Oh yeah, uh, I think uh, if I might uh, answer, start answering at least your your question. Uh, some content provider and some IX, some telco, uh, creating monopoly uh, in India. Uh, you have any uh, plan for this situation? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I want to start answering your question with the following remark. Um, I believe uh, that the best answer to your question is to invite the entire community of uh, all different suppliers of inter internet um, um, access, but also delivery of internet services. So that means on both sides of the outbound and inbound side of networks to participate more in platforms like ours. Because um, uh, being part of, uh, of an internet exchange uh, as an uh, interconnection ecosystem, uh, which allows the interconnection between uh, many different participants and a very neutral platform, um, manages perfectly the variety and diversity and avoids the creation of monopolies. A monopoly can be created if one party is uh, treated as a gateway. Internet exchanges is the perfect place you can call it marketplace and marketplaces are open and diverse therefore the more participants the more network operators connect to internet exchanges the the better the prevention from creation of monopolies thank you Ivo. the next okay. question comes from Vinay Nakpal, uh, I hope I have pronounced the name correctly. Vinay, can you please unmute yourself and ask your question if you like? Absolutely, thank you. Uh, great presentation. This is my uh, second virtual uh, get together that I'm, I'm 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 being part of, and it's just absolutely phenomenal. Thank you for doing this. Um, I'd like to I'd like to get your perspective on the enterprise side. You know, uh, especially. Uh, you know, with the current situation, uh, enterprises are thinking very, very strongly about their strategy for digital transformation, ensuring their employees have access to their corporate data, um, uh, let alone their own journey towards the cloud. Um, what what services does DKX provide today? And what is on the roadmap since we have the product team as well? Uh, just from the specifically on the enterprise side, I mean, DKX is known very heavily as an internet exchange provider, but uh, you know, uh, I think over the years, um, uh, the enterprise uh, tr business transformation has uh, picked up quite a bit. So, if you can share your perspective on that. Um, I think uh, I, I just want to mention in one sentence because uh, before I hand over to Chris, who is the right one to talk about specific services, I want to mention uh, one thing. Vinay, thank you for joining two webinars. I'm <laughs> extremely uh, happy for this uh, and for the nice feedback. And um, uh, DKX um, uh, started years back um, uh, to provide multi services, um, uh, which means we are not a peering point only uh, platform anymore. We are a multi service platform, and we want, of course, to address the variety of different enterprise needs for better interconnection. And now, uh, disregarding the sector, disregarding the sector, we, we, we voiced this already. Uh, and I want to um, hand over to Chris, who will give you direct answers with concrete examples, how enterprises with which services can connect to DKX um, today already. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your question. So um, basically, uh, I like, like your observation, and we actually share uh, the observation. So we see that peering is important, and we deliver it but that the entire ecosystem is transforming and we need to have an answer how to first of all address access of employees to, to company data and services, but um, even more important, the digital transformation, meaning um, workloads are shifted into clouds uh, and so on. What we are currently working on, I mean, we really have plenty of those projects because we think this is uh, one of the path uh, to go down in the future. And one project, for example, we work on, on is uh, a concept of a, of a user group. So a virtual um, encapsulated interconnection platform on top of our physical platform. And we uh, precisely working with Microsoft on the Microsoft Azure uh, peering service 
which exactly delivers that. The goal is to interconnect uh, ISPs with a lot of enterprise customers or even enterprise customers directly in a virtual isolated uh, uh, way so that they get prioritized by Microsoft, the, so the traffic per se, and we have a closed and very controlled environment where we can really give inter-domain traffic uh, qualities, quality of service um, promises we are uh, afraid of giving in, in the internet or Microsoft is afraid of giving in the internet and um, also security aspects where we really have a very tight control over the prefixes exchanged, not like at uh, uh, in, in, in the uh, global internet. And um, this is one way of really supporting enterprises to have good connectivity to service they're consuming. But this is just a, a starting point. So we're thinking, continue to think in this direction, how we can enable the workloads of the uh, enterprises, which I also introduced before, like multi-cloud cloud approaches, cloud native approaches. Um, that's all the stuff uh, we want to provide. And also the other services like Direct Interconnect uh, work for companies uh, very well. And Chris, yeah. just to add, uh, of course, as of today, enterprises, they can use the existing BigX Cloud Exchange, the Direct Cloud, what they, use, what they started using. We do have big Fortune 500 companies already connected to different BigX markets and using uh, BigX as their cloud connectivity uh, uh, interconnection platform. Already. And let me let me uh, add to that. Uh, what we also have done is what we call internally Project Reach. So uh, we have partnered with uh, carriers that we can pick up uh, enterprises in the data centers where they are, because they're you know the um, the interconnection community. The carriers are usually and, and the ISPs and the content providers are usually in different data centers and enterprises. Um, and uh, we uh, we have partners uh, partnered with carriers like uh, EO Networks, or Packet Fabric, and others uh, to pick up the um, the enterprise in their data centers where they are and transport them over to our infrastructure so that they can easily use uh, all the different interconnection services we just described, uh, like the Cloud Connect, uh, the maps, uh, the closed user groups, uh, all this kind of stuff. Um, um, so um, we we want to make it very easy and very uh, smooth for them to connect to us physically wise and then um, on top of that we have all the different interconnection services as uh, Chris and uh, Ivo just mentioned. Yeah, thank you. I think I think that's uh, very powerful, Thomas. You know the way you described it, because for enterprises, it's uh, about having a multi-home, um, multi-cloud strategy, and then a hybrid cloud as well. When they are looking at having distributed workloads in between their environments, so um, you know, as as I mentioned earlier, DKIX is typically um, and rightfully so traditionally known for its uh, global peering platform, and I think on the uh, interconnectivity side and, uh, you know, in, in terms of providing solution for um, multi-cloud platform and cloud exchange, as Evo talked about, I think that's extremely powerful, um, you know, to the enterprises and to the data center operators as well who are looking to put that, that type of solution together. Absolutely. Thank you, Vinay. That, this is exactly the path we're going on. Okay. Uh, next question, I would like to raise one of the written question, and this is from Michael Yap, and he asks, in Europe or Middle East, is IT or DKIX type of service considered as an essential service by the European governments? Um, essential service problem means critical infrastructure. Uh, I believe this is the case, but this is not the case in, in Europe or Middle East, so as we can see. Uh, uh, in, in, in other countries as well, actually in all markets, as Thomas explained this, uh, 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 we, we do believe that uh, there is no one government on the planet, especially after the last couple of weeks, uh, who didn't understand uh, the importance of digital infrastructure and data centers, fibers, carriers, fiber operators, carriers, ISPs, and of course, uh, internet exchanges, interconnection solutions platforms as DKIX. Um, has been considered already correctly as uh, crucial and critical infrastructure for the given reasons. The okay, uh, European uh, Internet Security um, Agency actually issued a report like four or five years. Thomas, we, we co-authored that, that piece, uh, issued uh, 
actually a report about it and it's clarifying that indeed IXPs are essential to the internet infrastructure. So if you if you Google it, you will also find this report and you if you're interested in details. And also in the list, the uh, directive uh, is written that uh, internet exchanges, at least the big ones, um, are considered uh, critical infrastructure. Okay. Next question uh, comes from... Probably from... One, one last question. Sorry about this. Okay. One last question because we're getting ripped out of time uh, and we don't want to, to ask people to stay longer and they have scheduled, of course, with us. <laughs> Okay, one last question from Vikas Swarmi. Uh, Vikas, you have the microphone. Okay, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I would like to ask a simple question. Uh, just uh, you have plans to connect uh, Delhi and Mumbai, uh, like you have shown uh, in uh, your slides. So I would like to ask, uh, do you have any plans to connect uh, uh, any Indian locations to any other uh, uh, country's locations by P2P? Or is there any existing, uh, you know, P2P that I'm not aware of? Um, I, I didn't get acoustically the second part of a question, probably it's in my end. Uh, sorry, can you repeat it? Uh, sorry for this. Okay, okay, uh, no, no problem. Uh, just, I wanted to ask, uh, um, do you have any plans to connect uh, Indian uh, internet exchange, any of them, uh, Mumbai or Delhi, maybe Ch Chennai, to any yeah. other locations, uh, to probably, uh, you know, Dubai, uh, via P2P, point-to-point uh, -point links? Or uh, is there any something already I don't uh, aware of, I'm not aware of? So to, if, uh, to understand your question correctly, you're asking if, uh, because Thomas presented already that we are working on the interconnection between Delhi and Dekis Delhi and Dekis Mumbai. So, so this is already uh -huh. in, in planning and, and happens literally these days, Delhi and mm -hmm. Mumbai, right? But if mm -hmm. I understood mm -hmm. you correctly, you're also asking if we plan to interconnect the Indian Dekis exchanges with other mm -hmm. exchanges outside of India run by Dekis. Mm -hmm. Is it correct? Is it yes, your question? Yes, yes. Okay, yes, so to is. answer this is very challenging as of today because, uh, as you might know, um, uh, the, the, the regulatory environment is, um, is quite com com complex. So um, mm -hmm. uh, we, we started uh, uh, evaluating what options are there, but as of today, I cannot give you a, a positive or negative answer on this. We're in evaluation. Uh, uh, we want to make sure that uh, all uh, regulatory requirements are met. And um, uh, there is a heavy work ahead of us to be done on, on this evaluation. So as of today, we, we just evaluate the regulatory side. Uh, so I cannot mm -hmm. give you an exact answer or timeline on that. Okay, okay, thank you. Sorry about this. Okay. Um, do we have time for more questions? I don't want to limit it probably to the moderator. Do we have scheduled more time? Uh, if there is more time, uh, we, we would love to continue with the questions. Uh, how how is uh, Wolfgang your perspective on this? How many questions do you have on the list? And uh, I have uh, I have uh, eleven written questions and I have wow. four raised hands at the moment. <laughs> oh, let, let's say let's say what I would suggest is uh, we will we will uh, try to answer all written questions uh, afterwards. Um, we can um, uh, uh, communicate on email as well. And uh, let's try to to answer uh, at least two more questions from the um, the raise hands questions, the voice questions, because these are live okay. participants as well. I have Kamal Hossein wants to ask a question. Kamal, do you have the microphone? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, this is Kamal from uh, Art Telecommunication, Bangladesh. Okay, I'm from Bangladesh. Okay. So uh, uh, currently we are we are connected with. You. Yeah, we are connect, uh, connected with your uh, uh, Chennai IX, okay, this IX, okay, in Chennai, okay. So, uh, unfortunately, in Chennai, uh, your uh, content is very low, okay. So, uh, more or less, uh, like, uh, uh, sometimes we, 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 uh, we suffering from the uh, inadequate uh, capacity with uh, Facebook, okay, and uh, <clears throat> Facebook and other other Indian content, okay. So do you have do you have uh, any plan uh, to enrich your uh, Chennai IX? Uh, because if you could do, then we, we will increase our uh, capacity in uh, Chennai another 10 days, okay. Uh, this Thank is you one for... Uh... Yeah, this is Thank one you. question, and another, and another question is uh, my uh, 
uh, planning uh, we, we, we are planning to connect with your uh, Marcelli okay with a uh, semi five okay so uh, so what will be the uh, procedure and uh, from Marcelli how will uh, uh, interconnect with other like uh, my my target is uh, interconnect with uh, Frankfurt also is this possible Okay. So I'll answer the first question. Thank you. I'll answer the first question and I'll hand over the second one to Thomas, who will uh, uh, give you an exact advice uh, how to uh, use Marseille Frankfurt at once. Uh, so the first question regarding Chennai. Uh, as we said, Digix Chennai uh, is uh, uh, younger than Mumbai. Uh, so, uh, um, and of course, uh, we will dramatically increase uh, um, the, the presence in Chennai um, as Thomas, I believe, mentioned in his um, uh, part, uh, uh, we uh, do have plans to um, uh, add more data centers enabled in Chennai. We are talking uh, with all DigX global uh, customers and networks connected to DigX on the content side, like Facebook, like Google, like Microsoft, just to mention a couple of names. The list is um, much longer. Uh, to, uh, of course, increase further dramatically their con connected capacity with um, DigX, uh, as they did, by the way, in Mumbai uh, in the last um, weeks, the capacity of, of uh, bigger content networks uh, has been more than doubled, even more than tripled. So you can uh, enjoy this in Mumbai. And the next big step in the next weeks and months um, will be to, to happen, um, to ask them to happen this in um, Delhi, uh, Chennai and and then uh, Calcutta, of course. To answer your question, yes, it's a matter of weeks. It's a matter of a very short time, and we are working on this, uh, inviting you to uh, uh, enjoy it very soon uh, everywhere where DigX operates in India. And now uh, okay. I want to hand over to Thomas about Massey and Frankfurt. Well, I have I have I have another uh, question uh, on top on on your answer. So. If I if I want, uh, so uh, is it possible to uh, remote connect uh, uh, from Chennai to Mumbai? I if I want. Uh, from yes, your, they uh, are. Mm -hmm. It's possible, right? Yes, so, it's possible. So, uh, you can use you can use partners of DKX who will provide you with the transport needed. So you can use the services of the Mumbai Exchange as well. Uh, okay, please okay, feel so. free to to talk uh, to talk to. Uh, uh, to, to our uh, team um, 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 on site, uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, of course, a very strong uh, DigX uh, India team on site, especially Sudhir Kunder. Uh, I will uh, have uh, here thanks to to the uh, thanks for the uh, director uh, of this presentation uh, for uh, for presenting uh, the picture. This is Sudhir Kunder. Uh, uh, you see his email on. Uh, on the slide, so please feel free to um, to contact him, and uh, he will help you uh, with uh, the connection to DigX Mumbai. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you, thank you for the uh, good uh, answers. Okay. You you're welcome. Now uh, uh, back to uh, Thomas. So uh, very briefly on uh, on the question about how you can connect to Marseille and to Frankfurt. So um, there are remote peering products available from DKIX. So when you want to peer, uh, you know, with the networks in Marseille or in Frankfurt, you can easily do that. Uh, you can write on the network DKIX is providing. So uh, we have very uh, attractive pricing for using the DKIX network. If you want to use that, of course, you can uh, use any other carrier uh, connected to DKIX also uh, to get, uh, you know, connected to these uh, locations. Um, and uh, again, here's the same. Um, it's the same story. Uh, please uh, contact Sudhir. He can ex uh, exactly uh, give you offers and, and a description how this can be done. Um, and, uh, you know, he can help you with, with all the detailed questions. And also, if you like, you can always reach out to me and uh, I can help you with, uh, with questions regarding and how to set this up. And uh, if, if we need to set up a meeting with your team, technical team to make it happen, please let us know. We are more than happy to do so. Oh, thank you. Thank you, okay. Thomas. Thank you, uh, thank you uh, for asking. And uh, the next raised hand goes to Hardeep Sandhu. Hardeep, you have the sorry, 
now you have the microphone yes hello we can hello. hear you yes uh, sir actually i have two questions uh, one is uh, some content provider uh, we are connected uh, bilaterally through the uh, dpx uh, but we are not getting content from them uh, like akamaya uh, akamaya we are getting from uh, our telcos not from our uh, ix and one is uh, uh, the main problem is root leaks from uh, mumbai ix the main problem is can you repeat root leaks route leaks okay mm -hmm. so this is this is a question uh, uh, regarding bilateral relationships as uh, as you know akamai is connected to take its mumbai we have to clarify uh, uh, this uh, this this uh, topic uh, i suggest uh, you contact uh, 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 sudhir again who will um, um, help you on this and and clarify Actually, what ex exactly is the reason for uh, the issues you you see there actually they shouldn't be any issues actually i think no one getting uh, proper akamaya traffic we have a huge uh, akamaya traffic but we are getting very uh, low traffic from mumbai yeah again I'm, I'm on single cases like this it's hard to answer um, during this format because um, oh. we do not have the facts on the table so i really oh. i really uh, I recommend uh, and and uh, uh, advise you to contact sudhir uh, and okay. I, I ask uh, sudhir kindly to to help you with this uh, uh, and normally there shouldn't be a problem we are um, we are more than happy to help you on this and see okay. what is the single uh, case reason here but i think this is a a, 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 a topic which should be then done bilaterally Vogan, the next question and i think this is, okay. must be really the last mm -hmm. one because it's uh, it's uh, uh, we are re really running out of time now <laughs> okay uh, uh, the one, last one uh, comment uh, one more comment if you have any technical issues please reach out to your um, sales uh, key account manager or to the customer service team they are more than happy to help you answer questions in you know in any behalf of the services you are um, you're using from dkick so please reach out to the customer service team anytime you have issues okay please the last on. question is from minu sorry i can't pronounce minu prabakaran uh, minu you have the microphone Hello, you have to unmute yourself before you can start talking. I can only enable the microphone. You have to unmute yourself. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Obviously, we we don't uh, we don't have uh, uh, we don't have a live uh, uh, voice stream there. Uh, please, Minu, feel free to to text your question and and email your question. We'll answer this in advance. With this, I want to say thank you, Wolfgang, for moderating the questions and answers part. I want to say thanks to uh, many thanks to to Thomas and Chris for being part of uh, this presentation. But of course, many thanks to the entire team behind um, this um, a second Dickens Global Webinar. I want to mention, um, of course, uh, Mikael Vasura, Andrea Haberland, and Marco Brandstetter. Uh, you, uh, a lot of you guys um, know supporting the uh, creation of this webinar. Please also feel free to, to chat with um, Wang Wong, who is our uh, partner in Malaysia uh, and uh, Singapore. And uh, last but not least, please guys do not forget, you all are the answers to the world today if it comes to managing our business and private life because you deliver digital infrastructure. So in this day, in this uh, saying, uh, please stay very safe and very healthy. Want to thank you for being part of this second Global Dickies webinar. More to follow and see and talk to you very soon. Many greetings and stay healthy. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Bye bye, everybody. Close.